You're listening to Virginia Trioli on ABC Radio Melbourne. That How Are You Mate belongs to John Pasuto, Liberal Party candidate for Hawthorne, former Shadow Attorney General, former party liner here as well. He's just happy to be back in the studio, I think. You miss your old spot, oh, don't I you? Oh, I do. Sorry, folks. So that was Not a bit of a, an, an unscripted outburst of elation to be back. I am hoping that this entire conversation is unscripted and Indeed. elated and candid. There's no point having these come-to-Jesus conversations if you can't be candid after an election loss like this, correct? I agree. So... Did you know this route was going to happen? Before it happened, did you have some strong sense that it was absolutely on in Victoria? Had a sense we had a problem. The scale of it was not. If you'd asked me a few weeks ago, Virginia, whether we would lose the seats of Kuyong, Higgins and Goldstein, most of us would have said, but probably not. Maybe Higgins is at risk, but the others have a margin we can probably sustain, even though we'll take on a bit of water. No one saw, I don't think, the extent of this, but... Again, with hindsight, you look back on these things and you think maybe this was the result that in 2019 didn't happen uh, and was delayed because of, I think, the Labor campaign and we were given a reprieve of sorts and then the reckoning came on Saturday. So uh, it's something I didn't see the scale of, but I knew there was a problem like all of us. We just thought we could hold on. So what was that problem? What were you being told that was clearly problematic, that was troubling, that was that was turning into some sort of backlash against your party? Yeah, I think in terms of... I, I can speak mainly in terms of... Burundara area, and that's where I've sort of been most focused, uh, given Hawthorne. Uh, Climate change was always going to be an issue, and and it was. I'm I'm convinced of that. Uh, I'm also convinced that integrity became an enormous issue, and Mm. I know that because I spoke to many people over recent weeks, and for the life of me, I can't understand why that wasn't sorted out um, well before the poll and and during the last parliament, because, you know, it's it's an important issue for everybody, and and it sits well within if you like, the crucible of of traditional liberal principles that you want ethical behaviour from your public sector officials and your elected officials. That should have been a space we owned and it's certainly something that I've spoken to many people about locally in Hawthorne. So so that was was an issue too. And and diversity, um, gender diversity and other forms of diversity were issues um, we could and should have been more pronounced on and I know we're doing that a bit at a state level. Do, do you are you aware of um, of liberal Victorians with some sort of voice and some kind of connection to the main party, to headquarters, to the federal office, pushing back on that stuff and saying, "Hey guys, you know this is an issue. Uh, th- this isn't really what you know uh, Victorian liberals uh, stand for anyway. Can't we solve this?" Has there been pushback? There's, there's been robust internal discussions for sure. Um, but what, look, form, what of the, form have they taken? Well, you know, internal discussions at, at council meetings, yeah. internal, in terms of the party, electorate conference meetings that we have internally, it was always raised. And there, there's always room for debate on those things, but no one can say that those issues weren't being, mm. being raised. But look, it's a, it's a broader problem about the need for Victoria to rebuild because it's important, I think, more importantly, it's important for the country and more importantly it's, you know, for the state of Victoria and the community that we develop a strong Victorian delegation to the federal parliament. The national conversation, in my view, doesn't reflect enough of what Victoria can offer our federation. And we've gone from 12 members down to, I think it'll be five or maybe six. And that's not strong Mm. in the the national total of Liberal and National MP. So we've got to do that. And it's not so much for, for our sake as a party, but for the countries, we need a strong and vibrant Liberal Party. And that needs a strong Victorian delegation. John Pesuto is with you, Liberal Party candidate for Hawthorne. He was the uh, member for Hawthorne and he'll be competing for that seat again at the state election at the end of the year. Uh, John Pesuto, how do you account for Josh Frydenberg losing his seat? What's your best explanation for that? Well, I think uh, as a party we need to do more to listen to those issues that we spoke about before. Um, Climate change, they're not looking in my view, having spent many years now talking to, to locals about this issue, people don't expect us to be on the same page as the other parties. They just want to sure. see that there's a strong position on it and that we get the issue. And um, we actually, as a, as a federal government, I'll just talk briefly about that, there was a lot being done, but we weren't even explaining that. I think Josh has made that point. So we needed to do more to impart that message and to do more. I, I, I think that we, and I strongly support this, I think we needed more ambitious 2030 targets. Josh has confirmed, Josh Frydenberg's confirmed that um, some members of the party did come to him last year and say, look, you've got to step up and you've got to try and knock off Scott Morrison. Do you wish that he had? Look, I guess it's all historical now. I'd look, always, look, it I'd, is, yeah, but but look, I'd, 
I'd always hoped that he might put his hand up in 20, uh, 2018. That 2018. Was, that's when, mm. when that, and I know it couldn't happen, but I'd, I'd always hope that would happen. Look, it's, it's uh, to some extent academic now, but look, we just really have to now, given what's happened, this is not just a loss, it's a loss that really demands of us a response that says we are a party of government, right? We're not there to subdivide the lots and downsize to a one-bedroom unit. We are a party that seeks to represent constituencies across the board. Now, for those people, usually observing from the sidelines, with no disrespect, people who say that the party needs to be one way or the other, can I respectfully suggest that if you need any example of how you can do that, why is Labor in office at a state level? Why is Labor in office at a federal level? Almost, at a federal level, almost governing in its own right. Think of the Liberal Party, if you will, as a home where everybody is welcome, everybody can feel secure, and dare I say it, everybody, no matter who they are or what their preferences are, can feel loved. That is the party that I'm a member of, and that's the party I want to champion in areas like Hawthorne and everywhere else I can help. So is Peter Dutton then the right leader to... to create that party to to convince the majority of voters in Australia that you are that big welcoming home? Well, I want him to be and... Do you think he, he is? Well, I think he can be and there's an opportunity to do that. I know there's a lot of history there, but if... I say that, Virginia, because I can't control what happens at a federal level. Of course. All I can say is that um, if Peter, as we all expect, is to become the federal leader, then, you know, I would welcome him coming into Hawthorne and talking to people. And what we've got to do is listen to them. You know, listen to the fact that they do take these issues serious. And I think he's said in his early comments that he, that he wants to take a pragmatic approach to those things, which offers some hope. And if he's willing to sit down, that's the caveat I add, mm. that come down and talk to these people. And, and I want to make this point, if I can, Virginia, that I want certainly my party to move beyond this sort of false dichotomy between people who live in inner city areas or inner urban areas and those who live in outer urban areas in the regions. Let's not make presumptions that because someone lives in an outer suburban area, they don't care about integrity or climate or those issues. And let's not assume that people who live in inner areas like me, I'm Camberwell, right? So let's not assume that people don't care about cost of living and the impacts on people who live in regions and outer suburban areas. Let's respect people and, and understand that they all have, might have different priorities but generally they do want the best for our country. And yet uh, the, the very powerful organisations and one of them being News Corp that is a, a chief booster of and supporter of your party, the Liberal Party would not have it that way. They insist that certain issues in contemporary Australia right now are divided up left and right. That issues about you know gender equality is a left issue. That climate change is a left issue. That Indigenous issues is a left issue. You are swimming against that very powerful tide if you want to argue that anyone in Victoria may hold those views and that a Liberal Party has to encompass all those views, aren't you? Can I offer you my view of the world on this? The Liberal philosophy that has endured through the decades... It coalesces around basic things that people, even though they might disagree on certain issues, surely must be able to rally around. The idea of integrity in government, surely there, there is a conservative or centre-right ethic there. Opportunity for people, regardless of gender, race or ethnic background or sexual preference, surely equality of opportunity means something to people on the centre right of politics. Don't you, don't you need to go and tell Rupert Murdoch and his powerful columnists all that? Hey, I'm just a candidate in Hawthorne. This is, the, <laughs> this is what I'm trying to do for my party and my, my own campaign. And so what, what I'm saying is that let's not think that a particular issue means you are a good Liberal or a good Conservative. So let me give an example. I, I approach climate change in what I think is the most, most faithful observance of the centre-right ethic. Mm. The idea that we leave something in better shape than that in which we inherited it. That's why I believe in sound fiscal management, so that future generations don't bear the burdens of our decisions that are not soundly based. That's, the a, that's, same a, that's thing a liberal for me, philosophy for you. Well, it must be. The idea of leaving something in better shape for future generations and generations yet unborn, that must be a centre-right ethic. 
So this issue over the science and engineering and then co-opting that into a debate over ideology, uh, I welcome it. I, I'm not one that, that wants to stamp out debate, but I can only give you my view, and I think it's consistent with many people in Hawthorne, is that there can be a centre-right approach which actually takes a preeminent position in this debate. All right, well, there's a challenge to you. one three hundred triple two seven seven four. The calls are pouring in. The Give it to me, are, folks. The, <laughs> the texts are pouring in, and I'd love to hear from you on this because this is this is a massive challenge for for the place in Australia that was always considered the jewel in the crown for the Liberal Party, which was Victoria and these precious seats here and a particular kind of liberalism that a lot of people have celebrated over the years, the the, the liberalism of, of Dick Hamer and others, it, which actually does fit Can into it, what you described there. That they were very, on, on economic issues, they were strong. On social issues, they were very much progressive and moderate. And yeah. What does this mean for the state election, do you think? For the Liberal Party in the state election, what what, what is the immediate challenge that arises from this? Well, I think there's great opportunity and... and um, and, and can I just say, yes, I am a candidate. So there'll be a little bit mm. of that. Forgive me for that, folks. Sure, but sure. I can tell That's you all right. We can, we, that, we can, that, we can take a grain I, of salt. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, integrity is a big issue. It's probably the most important issue that I'm campaigning on along with issues like climate in my electorate. Uh, integrity in government. Don't tell me that's not an issue at a state level too. So I was able to have lots of very productive and constructive discussions with people who were out there campaigning for Mon- Dr. Monique Ryan. And we had a lot in common. Uh, on that, on gender diversity, I strongly support that. I want to see more women and people from different backgrounds come into the Liberal Party, stand for office, and get elected. So, why is the Liberal Party out there trying to recruit people like Monique Ryan? We've got to do more to reach out into the community and identify and encourage those people to put their hands up. I think one of the problems that we've got right at the start of the process is people have been, if you like, uh, they avoid the political contests in terms of pre-selections. We've got to get more women and people from different backgrounds putting their hands up for office and then making sure that our contingent of MPs and candidates reflects that community. John, work on the headphones that you've got there. You may need to turn up one of those dials. Do I need a helmet for this? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Let's find out, shall we? I uh, missed the calls. Matt, Matt, Matt in Fairfield, good morning. You may need to uh, twiddle with your volume to see if you can hear something. Uh, Matt, go right ahead. Uh, good morning, Virginia and John. Um, good Matt. Thanks for being candid, John. But um, honestly, your party is no longer centre-right. It has not been for decades. I don't know why you stick with a party that doesn't reflect your values. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Uh, look, can I give you a different view? I think they're overwhelmingly... Oh, I know you'll put spin on it, for sure. Uh, well, OK, well, let's hear each other out respectfully. Um, you make you make a point that I don't consider as unreasonable because I can understand why people would think that. Can I just assure you that in terms of the membership of the Liberal Party, I think a lot of them, an overwhelming majority, would be very comfortable with what I've just said. And to give then an example, they, Matt... Then why don't they speak up? Why don't well, they actually got, change their party? Ch- pull well, their party back to where the party here in Victoria in particular once was. And champion what we've done. Let me give you an example, Matt. Um, integrity. I'm sure it's a big issue for you, if I'm not mistaken. It's a big issue for me. Do you know who brought in the IBAC? It was Ted Bailey. Now, uh, in 2012. Now, why don't we champion that more? I think we should, and there's a lot that we do that we don't champion for one reason or another. And I guess, Matt, what I want to see, apart from, you know, a a serious consideration of the implications of Saturday's result, uh, is to make sure we champion the good things that we do do. Um, It might have been a sort of a bit of a detour involved, but same-sex marriage. I mean, it was brought in under a liberal... It it got there in a convoluted way, and it could have got there a lot more easily, but it got there. Let's hear from Abdul in Croydon. Abdul, John Pasuto is here with me. Go ahead. Oh, yes, I'm just wondering, uh, when are they going to come, the Liberal Party? They're still stuck in the 1950s and it's 2022, so they're just still behind, you know, their In, in what way? Stuck everything. Like, have a look at the issue with the election, that seat of Warringah, Victoria, the position leader, like he has to expel the, his member today, like this week. Those kind of issues, people don't like, you know, they're not in the 1950s. So there's other big issues. So they need to update it if they want to win, I think. Okay. John? Abdul, thanks for, your, thanks for your call. And could I persuade you, perhaps, is there anything I can do to persuade you that there are people like myself in the party, a lot of us, in fact, the overwhelming majority, who don't want the debate to be about that, but to be about the issues that really matter to people. And, and you know, to be honest, 
whilst uh, you know I can understand why that happened, it came at, at, at some cost to to urban seats right across the country. So Abdul, if I can offer you that assurance, it may not be enough to convince you right now, but there are a lot of us who want what you want to see in the Liberal Party. Are you feeling more or less confident about your tilt in Hawthorne following the election? Look, I guess the federal election for me was... Look, I'd already been, uh, if you like, uh, bumped around in 2018, so yes, I've been doing have. a lot of thinking. Uh, you just can't take anything for granted anymore. And, and to be... You know, quite candid, nor can Labor. If you look at the results, and I know a lot of people are pouring over the results all over the country because this has just turned the map on its head. Um, if you, like, say, look at Kuyong, and that's what, where I'm most familiar with, um, Labor's primary got down to five. Now, yes, you might say, well, Labor ran dead, and the Greens also didn't get much better. I think they're one or two percent um, above that across most booths. Um, you can argue, if you want to defend that, that, well, they ran dead and it was a deliberate strategy. But that can't account for the fact that only five in a hundred people walked into a booth and put Labor number one. Now, for a major party... Mm. Now, don't, don't get me wrong, folks. I, I know we've got challenges and I'm going to work as hard as I can. And I'm talking to people right across the board. But that can't be good for them either. Except you had a, the absolute opposite in Higgins, where you did have a really you know, a, um, impressive candidate run and she got up. Uh, uh, as in Katie Allen? Uh, as in uh, the Labor candidate. You know, so the Labor vote was substantial there. We're coming well, yeah, up to the news, so you'll I, have to be I, short. Look, I, I, I've never understood the difference between Kuyong and Higgins, but yes. they're, they're very different electorates, and people who've studied the results are very different. But we've got work to do, but we can do it. I'm confident that at a state level we've got a good program. John Pasuto, it's always good to talk to you and great to have you so candid this morning on the program. Thanks for being here. Pleasure.